I'm learning. On his way back to the front entrance, he spotted Tetsuo up ahead, walking toward him with his great garbage bag in hand. I don't know where I got great from, just, just let it go. Yuji lowered his gaze, determined to avoid eye contact. As they crossed paths, he detected a whiff of that pleasant scent again. But he was far too tense to wonder what it was. As he passed the shoe locker and headed toward his classroom, it was all Yuji could do not to collapse on the spot. Are you just getting horny at school? The only thing keeping him going was his desperate desire to go home and rest. Again? Keep it in your pants. The next day, Yuji still felt miserable. It seemed he had yet to overcome his exhaustion. From the moment he woke up, he felt feverish. Even his heartbeat felt irregular. It was a struggle just getting to school. He'd had occasion to curse his pathetic constitution many times over the course of his life, and today was proving to be yet another. Nevertheless, he managed to get through his classes, though it took every ounce of strength he had. Once afternoon assembly had ended, Yuji headed straight to the garbage cans and started sorting the burnable trash. His condition hadn't improved at all over the course of the day, and contrary, and on the contrary, it felt like it was getting worse. This is a husbando game, yes. He just wanted to go home. Don't worry, you're gonna get your thing afterwards. He sensed Tetsuo's presence, but ignored him. As soon as he was done, he tied up his trash bags and walked out of the classroom. Arriving at the dumpsters, Yuji tossed his bag inside and headed back the way he came. On the way back, Tetsuo was nowhere to be seen. He must have taken a different route. Relieved, he started packing up to go home, but just then, Makoto walked into the classroom. The moment he spotted... Yuji, he broke into a cheerful grin. Makoto leaned in curiously, but Yuji pulled away. He didn't feel comfortable having someone stare at, stare, stare at him up close. Granted, he could tolerate it most days, but today he just wasn't in the mood. Thankfully, Makoto had taken the hint, and he smiled apologetically. Makoto waved and headed back to his seat. Feeling a little guilty, Yuji grabbed his book bag and quickly left the room. But just as he stare started down the hall to the shoe lockers, the door to the neighboring staff room slid open. Oh. It's always that one day you really want to go home, be it you don't feel good, you just want to sleep, you know, be it any of that shit. You just want to go as quick as possible, work, school, any of that. That is the day every single person in the entire universe has to bug you over stupid shit. Has anyone ever noticed that? It's always when you want to go home. Always. You're like, I'm going to go home early, I'm going to get some sleep, I ain't feeling good. Every single person decides, Hi! I want to talk to you! Out popped Yuji's homeroom teacher, Kamiya, holding a large beaker with a syringe and a pair of tweezers sticking out of it. His actual personality aside, Kamiya's general appearance gave him a certain air of sloppiness. Tall and bow Wait a minute, did we do this already? Did we do this already? Hold on. 
Hold on. Yep, I'm stupid. The saves are really weird. A message popped up in Kitani's cell phone a few hours after lunch. He was particularly surprised, if anything, this was par for the course. After a brief call to inform the school, Kitani grabbed a change of clothes for Xenia and got in the car. At least a few times Xenia had summoned him, he admit, admit, adamantly refused to go into town in the same clothes he had worn to school. Kitani had been forced to drive him home first. This time, however, he planned for the kid's idiocy, idio, idiosyncrasies. Xenia would have a change of clothes in the car. Kitani, Osoi. Yeah, it took me until that one scene to figure it out. Oh well. Xenia was standing outside the gate with his arms crossed. In reality, he was hardly late. He arrived more or less as quickly as he always did when shuttling Xenia to and from school. He hopped out of the car and opened the rear passenger door. Congrats on discovering your innate stupidity. Mo ma many never do. You're acting like I haven't admitted that I'm stupid. Look, we almost had to go over the uh, wanking scene again. Be glad I caught it. Xenia climbed eagerly into the ba back seat. Kitani shut the door behind him and hopped back into the driver's seat, then set off towards the mall near the train station. As it turned out, Xenia was a lot more willing to change clothes in the car than he expected. Instead of complaining, the boy praised his initiative. After Katani parked the car, they got out and stepped into the elevator. The moment the doors opened, again Xenia sauntered onto the floor, bursting with enthusiasm. One by one, he blasted through each boutique, buying almost everything he tried on, the very picture of self-indulgence. This man shops like a woman. A dozen stores later, Xenia showed no sign of flagging. It is very chaotic. I have to look at the dates of the, and the uh, timestamps. That's the only reason I figured it out. Katani followed after him silently, his arms laden with heavy shopping bags. He could feel the salespeople staring at them from afar. To the average person, they must look like quite the odd pair. Perhaps Xenia wouldn't mind, but Katana knew exactly how out of place he was. He grabbed a sweater laying forgotten at the bottom of the shelf and giggled to himself. Sure enough, it was light knit cardigan in pastel pink. A discount sticker had been slapped over the price tag. Clearly, it was an item that no one else had wanted. You can literally buy it and then wear it when it gets cold. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the brat on this one because if it's you know if it's on sale, you can always just wear it when it gets cold. His sudden fury echoed through the store. Listen here, you little shit. The air around them froze as Enya's voice took a chiding tone. He 
He held the cardigan up high, practically thrusting it in Kitani's face. Ne, kore, niyau? Do na no yo? So kon to kwa sa, Kitani no shojiki na iken te atsu ki kitain deo ne? He is a woman. His tone was chipper, but his eye was not, but his eye was not smiling. Can I see? I'm not, I'm not one for shopping for clothes, but if you put me in a store with collectibles, I will go straight up fucking female shopping. Katani knew that he had no choice but to do what he was told. So, this is me. At this, Zenya smiled so brightly he seemed a different person altogether. He gazed at the cardigan with such love, it might have been a precious jewel. What man wears a pink cardigan? Zenya spun and headed the handed the cardigan to the flabbergasted sales clerk. You show me a man that wears a pink cardigan. Was was he wearing a cardigan? Do it. Do it. Wear pink. Do it. So as the clerk rang up their purchase, Kitani shot Zenya a hesitant look. A pastel pink suit? He couldn't be serious. You wanna put the iguana in it? Okay. Okay. This wasn't the first time Zenya had made such a demand. He'd previously asked Kitani to sew him a miniature yukata for his pet. Okay, that's cute. <laughs> Although Kitani could handle most chores, sewing was not one of his talents. Nevertheless, he'd given it his best shot. After considerable effort, he managed a fairly decent product, and he'd never forgotten the happiness on Zenya's face. It had all been worth it, and secretly, he'd felt that he wouldn't mind sewing for Zenya again. Zenya whooped with joy, grinning from the ear to ear. Meanwhile, Katani took the shopping bag from the clearly uncomfortable clerk. The shopping continued for a while longer. By the time they were ready to head home, the back seat of the car was filled with fat bag, fat shopping bags. After glancing at the digital clock on the dashboard, Kitani stepped on the gas with a hint of impatience. Zenya was sitting in the front, gazing out the window. He'd been quiet for a while now. And so they headed for home beneath the brilliant sunset. Welcome, everybody. When they arrived, Zenya ran straight up to his room on the second floor. The clock had just struck 5 p.m. It was the it was time for his daily ritual. After an hour or so, Zenya emerged from his room looking haggard. He sat silently at the, di at the dining room table sulking. Meanwhile, Katani did some cleaning and prepared dinner. Now and then he glanced at Zenya but didn't say a word. At times like these, he knew better than to disturb the young man. Kitani. Hi. That is a gay outfit. Zenya stood up and left the room. Kitani stopped what he was doing and followed him upstairs. The room at the end of the hall had been set aside for the iguana's use. Inside, Christy sat, had her very own special habitat. The room was humid, with a large glass greenhouse enclosure, taking up most of the space. Zenya pulled some green leafy vegetables out of the refrigerator nearby and offered them to the iguana sitting on her perch. Hola, Chris. Go 
Christy leaned off the perch and secured herself on Zenya's arm and began to eat. Kondo, ne? Kitani ga mata Chris no fuku tsukutte kureru te. Osoroi da te. Yokatta ne. Ureshii ne, Chris. As Zenya stroked her back contently, Kitani watched on, feeling increasingly conflicted. That Kitani would grant Zenya's request was a given. Zenya knew this, and still he responded with such joy. Kitani found this painful somehow. Kitani. Kitani looked up in the middle of changing Christie's bowl of、uh, water bowl. Hi. Christie no sewa ga owatta ra, heya ni oide ne. Zenya smiled faintly. Hi. Suppressing the urge to panic, Kitani lowered his gaze and nodded. He had a feeling this was coming. Once he was done feeding her, Zenya put the lizard on his shoulder and left the room. Katani sighed, still holding the bowl in his hands. He could feel his mood growing sour. At this time of day, there was only one thing Zenya would want, could want. One might even have called it Katani's ritual. Truth be told, even after all this time, he still wasn't used to it. But Zenya would never take no for an answer. Uh oh. Katani sighed once more and then left the room on le- leaden legs. I don't like where this is going. Mm. His knock was met with a muffled response. Katani opened the door and walked in. The main ceiling light was off, leaving the room dark, but for the soft, multicolored glow of Zenya's decorative lights. It's actually a nice room. <laughs> Time to wank off the young master again. I feel like that's where we're going with this. Zenya was sitting on top of the black duvet covering his bed. Eating something, Christy was perched on his shoulder.、Mm. He was stuffing thin slices of raw beef into his open mouth. Can you eat raw beef? Can you? So, Kitani shook his head slightly. Zenya petted the bed next to him with his free hand. I think Tenji's right with this one. Can you, yes, should you, no? Hesitantly, Katani sat. The room smelled strange, like he was burning incense somehow, somewhere. Katani couldn't quite place the scent. The retro psychedelic decor perfectly complemented Zenya's personality. Though Katani wasn't one to judge, it was all a little tacky for his taste. The room's most prominent feature was a glass case sitting atop a chest of drawers. The case displayed a wide variety of eye patches. If he, were young, if he was younger, Katani might have appreciated Zenia's style, but at his age, it only made him uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't like where this is going. While licking his fingers clean, Zenia gr- gazed into Katani's eyes. <laughs> Alrighty then. Yeah, so no. Well, this is gonna go exactly where we all thought. Before Katani could protest further, Zenya hopped up on the bed behind him and put his hands on Katani's shoulders. Mo chan, honto ni. Ii kara, ii kara. Zenya repeated himself loudly as he started to rub. Katani's muscles were tense and sore from days of hard work, and the pressure made him exhale, exhale softly. Zenya wasn't especially skilled, but regardless, it felt nice to have his blood flowing once more. I'm not gonna look at the chat. I already know the jokes that are about to hit the chat room. Do yo, kimochi? Hi. As he reluctantly gazed, gave into the massage, a thought occurred to him. 
His thought was, has anyone else seen Deliverance? Xenia wouldn't volunteer to give him a back rub for nothing. He had to have an angle. <laughs> I hope I need an adult. <laughs> sure enough, I felt Z Sure enough. Sure enough, he felt Xenia's breath tickle his ear. No means no. Hi. Oh, is that all? I didn't mean to do that. An unusual request. Xenia hardly ever took notice of anyone. Who could he possibly want to know more about? そうそう。なんかさ、体弱いみたい。修行式でもバタって倒れちゃった青白い子でさ。でね。その子について調べてほしいの。何でもいいから。いろんなこと。わかりました。Sukiyama Yuji. The name was unfamiliar. Supposedly, supposedly, the young man was sick, but surely there must have been more to him than that if he'd managed to catch Zenya's interest. なんかね。いろいろ同じとこがあるっぽいんだよね。もしかしたらさ。同じ。そう。俺とお前は同じだぜ。みたいな。Katani didn't really understand what Xenia was saying. Nevertheless, with a little legwork, he could easily find out what sort of person... Kitani. And it begins! I want that bloody USA sh thing. That's actually cool. The hands on his shoulders felt still, fell still. Katani tensed up slightly as Xenia whispered into his ear. No means no. He moved beside Katani and peered into his eyes. For a moment, Katani forgot to breathe. Then Senya removed his eye patch. Holy shit! Okay. I wasn't expecting that one. Then Senya. Fuck me! Then Senya removed his eye patch, revealing the deformity beneath. The skin around Xenia's right eye was red and inflamed, as though it had been burned with hot metal. Flesh bulged from the gaps around his bloodshot eyeball, and what remained of the eyelid did nothing to hide it. Occasionally, the eyeball twitched like a fetus kicking in the womb. The sight filled Katani with a mixture of emotions. Not quite disgust, not quite fear. No, it was something far more complicated than that. The eye patch isn't just a fashion statement. Not unless he wants to play an alien. Xenia leaned into him like a child begging for candy. He wants the lollipop. <laughs> Somebody... Some, I made that joke before anyone in the chat could. Summoning all his courage. Kitani cupped Xenia's face in his hands. Then he drew his lips close and gently set his tongue over Xenia's right eye. Why? Why though? Why? That's fucking weird. on it. Look at that. Oh. Thank you, Christy. Thank you. Good lizard. Oh, look at her. She does what the guinea pigs do with my hair. Christy is the best little girl. Look at her. She's so cute. Christy gonna get her own spot on the freaking thumbnail. 
<laughs> I can get I can get serious again. A shiver ran through Xenia's body as Katani's tongue brushed the warm mucus membrane. We are going all in on this one, everyone. I hope you don't have anything in I hope you're not eating anything. Katani's instinct screamed at him to stop, but he ignored it and pressed on. It's fucking nasty. He couldn't stop, not until Xenia was satisfied. <laughs> I'm just looking at Christine now. Xenia chuckled as Katani gently traced the gap between his eyeball and the surrounding flesh. From time to time, Xenia asked him to perform this ritual. No, not a ritual. This was a trial. Xenia always kept his eye covered. He would never reveal it, much less allow Katani to touch it, unless he was trying to test Katani's loyalty. Any time Xenia's confidence wavered, he would call upon his servant to prove himself once more. Katani had been through this many times now, but could never quite come to terms with it. And yet, if it made Xenia feel better, he couldn't say no. <laughs> Xenia giggled and stroked Katani's hair. Flesh upon flesh. Blood set aflame by the slightest contact. But there was no romance between them. No love, no desire. Nothing but unwavering loyalty. You're fucking weird. You're fucking weird. Late that night, at the Okinaga residence, Kunihito knelt before the altar alone. Beneath the house lay a tiny chapel. Kunihito had built it himself as a place to worship God, his God. To Kunihito, his God was everywhere. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know why that face makes me laugh, but it does. The man clasped his thick, wrinkled fingers together and shot a pleading look at the statue on the altar. Of all the bizarre implements filling the cramped space, this statue was the strangest by far. It appeared, for all the world, like a misshapen lump of volcanic rock. If this was meant to be a god, it was surely not a good a god of men. And yet, Konohito awe was real. He prostrated, prostrated himself before the thing, as though to welcome the second coming of Christ himself. Note to self, stay away from Xenia, preferably a, conti a, con a continent or two. So do I have a way of picking good visual novels, guys? Or really fucked up ones? A breath of wind swept through the chamber. For a moment, the candles flickered, and Kanahito's shadow danced upon the walls like a demon struggling to break free. Because you fucking humans are weird, look what your son's doing up there. This is God speaking. Just then, the, stra the stronger gust of wind blew through the room, snuffing several candles. <laughs> Little did he know that was Zenny in the background going... <laughs> Konohito let out a shriek and curled into a ball, hands clasped together above his head. Two thick books lay forgotten at his trembling feet. One said the Necronomicon, that one was weird. The tattered and faded each bore the words Holy Scripture on its cover. Duka. Man, Christian started worshipping weird shit. His prayers continued without pause. Oh, do I still have, uh... Yes, I do! I just realized she's still up there. Go away.
Kitani stood at the entrance of the chapel, breath bated watching Konohito with a sorrowful expression. It was, pitif it was a pitiful sight, to be sure. But the man in there was still the man who'd saved his life. Nothing would ever change that. What, nothing would ever change what he meant to Katani. And yet, it still hurt to see him like this. Every night at the stroke of twelve, Konohito would enter the chapel and stay there praying until dawn. Once he finally emerged, pale and haggard, he would sleep, but only for an hour or two. More than anything, Kitani feared his master's health. The longer he kept this up, the more likely he would collapse from stress. But Konehito couldn't stop. To stop would make them angry, he said. Zenya would be punished, he said. Konehito was praying to protect his son. I mean, I'm not saying that maybe you should just, you know, let your son. Nah. We wouldn't say that. Zenya despised him, and yet he still cared. But Konohito's feelings toward his son was not like most fathers. What did you do? Konohito was afraid of Zenya, and Kitani had begun to realize that this was driving Zenya to rebel even more. But it wasn't his place to interfere. Smack the little shit. All he could do was watch over the broken family and pray that these tangled threads could one day be unwound. The rain, coupled with the heat of the early summer, had served to create a distinctly muggy weekend. Yuji had l only left the house to go to work Saturday night. The rest of, of his time he spent holed up in his room with his aquarium. Outside, the downpour continued unending. Just tap in the glass. Ding, 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 ding. Yuji sat on the so sat on the sofa, letting his mind wander as he gazed at the faintly glowing aquarium. The neon tetras swam around their little rectangular world, frolicking in the seaweed. The bubbling, frothing on the surface, the insectile hum, yep, insectile hum of the motor. The light dancing on the walls. Thank you. It felt like time had stopped just for him. Outside, the world went on, rain or shine, but inside this room, none of that mattered, or so he could almost believe. And yet, things were changing, slowly but surely. Nothing could stay the same from one moment to the next. Not him, not this room. Transformation, metamorphosis, changes unseen, or simply unnoticed. There was no going back. Even if he tried, that too would bring change. Nothing lasted forever. His body was relaxed. He felt peaceful and calm. For once, his condition was stable. Give it five minutes. He was always on the edge at school. Perhaps that was why he so often wound up thinking himself into corners. But his homeroom teacher, Kamiya, had made him see the importance of loosening up from time to time. For now, Yuji just wanted to forget everything and give himself over to this one fleeting moment. Yuji sat there for hours as his mind wandered. That weed was some good shit, man. Then the phone rang, shred shredding his tranquility like a knife. By the way, um, after this I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a hint at a new sticker coming to the Patreon. He sat up slowly and reached over to grab it. It was Erica. Snapping back to reality, he pushed the answer button and put the phone to his ear. Oh, Yoku, sorry. A familiar voice echoed through the receiver. Oh. Oh, 
元気って声じゃないそうかなうん疲れてる感じがする学校大変なの He shook his head ruefully, smiling. He could never hide anything from her. Her turn, tone grew more insistent. Yuji wasn't sure what to tell her. But he decided to try anyway. So, yeah, sis, I got really horny in a classroom. That's why everything's been stressful. <laughs> she sighed and he felt the atmosphere of the call turn serious. よく我慢することの方が辛いよ。元気になってくれたら私はそれが一番嬉しい。だから辛い時は無理しないで。ちゃんと病院へ行きなさい。I'm going to read Tenchi's comment. And I keep hallucinating blood and meter falling out of my rear end. Serious conversation, suddenly that just ruined it. Thank you. That was perfect. He appreciated her concern, but felt guilty all the same. It seemed that no matter how hard he tried, he would always burden, would always be a burden on his sister. If it, had, if it would help him stand on his own two feet, maybe going to the doctors wasn't such a bad idea after all. どこかって、どこへ好きだけど。as much as he appreciated the invitation, Yuji couldn't help but hesitate. Erika should prioritize her new family, not him. Demo. Sorry, move my mic. Soretomo. ああ。うん。<笑> Yuji set his phone back on the coffee table. Ever since they were kids, Erica had always been weirdly persistent. Per persistent whatever when it comes to his health no matter how he tried to hide it she always knew when he was feeling unwell she always said that he could tell by his voice and expression but even now they lived apart she somehow managed to call right when he needed her the most even if the invitation had been more for his sake than hers he still appreciated it he needed to get better soon in order to uphold his end of the bargain. In the meantime, he decided he'd call the school tomorrow and let them know he'd be stopping by the doctors in the morning. With that settled, he, Yuji slowly closed his eyes. And so the night passed quietly with the rain.
Monday morning rolled around, and after a brief call with the academy, UJ headed headed to the neighborhood clinic. Let me see. I'm going. You guys want a little bit of this? A little bit more of this? Or should we move on to Sweet Dream Succubus? So we've been going for this for a little while now. I think this is a good stopping point. Sweet Dreams. Alright. 